There we go. Just as the music <laughs> dies down. Oh, hello everyone who will be seeing this eventually on YouTube because this is not live. This is, well, we're recording this as we are, but we're not live on Twitch. Uh, I'll be your Captain Hillian for this little extra, along with... Hey, Sir Mike, Lieutenant Rakir, at your service. A little bit snow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a lot of snow we do in this stream today. I don't just know this more. <laughs> okay. And yeah, welcome back to the Sexy Brutale, where we'll be moving on to my oh, to my original save game here, where I have collected everything, or should we have collected everything, and we'll go over that. But first, just a little fact that I noticed is that each of the save games has a different background here. And yeah, I gotta say, this one is a bit creepy. I'm not easily crept out by stuff, but yeah. And then we have this one with the bloody lady. This one with, I'm guessing, one of the staff after having just committed the murder. Wait, no, that's not staff. Look okay. at the head; it's dripping. Hmm. I don't. I could it be? Hmm. Now uh, she had. Could that Wait. be her? Yeah. But that could be her. That... Wait, I think I know who it is. No, no, look at the hair. That's us! Oh, you! El Afcario, maybe that <laughs> he fell into a pool of blood. Uh, but then again, I, I think these might be more concept art than anything else or such. Then we have, well, <laughs> the Lucas and the crew. And last but not least, just playing cards and a bloody heart, which is very fitting for Eleanor. But yeah. Let's go over here, and we're going to go through all of the extra info that we could have found all throughout the mansion. And... Get up, Mark. <laughs> I always said, yeah, get up, Lufcadio, but we know it's Lucas in his older ages. But, yeah. Okay, inventory, we have nothing here. We have all of the progress, all of the invitations. I have no idea how I found these. And all of the cards. Which, well, for, there is something that you can do with those other than collect them. But I'll show that at the end. For now, we have the brochure. We've seen all the tutorials for all of the items. The fixed pie, uh, the broken watch, winding keys, and all of the abilities. Then we have the invitations. Uh, these I think you get from uh, finding the invitations. So we have the Clockwork Baron. Reginald Sixpence is a genius clockmaker and mechanic who was originally commissioned to create the extravagant timepieces featured throughout the mansion. On one visit, he brought his niece along to help with a particularly challenging, challenging piece. As the Marquis met her, the rate of Sixpence's invitations to the mansion increased dramatically, and over the years and events that followed, the two men became extremely close. But Reginald could be somewhat blind to the intentions and emotions of others. He has become distraught that one of the Marquis's projects that Sixpence helped with may have a darker and more dangerous aim than he imagined. Actually, I think we found this one as we played through before, and yeah, he is. That's actually talking about the explo uh, the, the bombs and such. He inadvertently helped make those. <clears throat> Then we have Clay Rockridge, the brute in a suit. Clay Rockridge was previously the head of security at the Sexy Brutale, but over the years became firm friends with the Marquis. Powerful and intimidating, he and his much gentler brother, Head Croupé, I think that's how you say that, Red, oversaw many of the most successful and influential evenings at the Sexy Brutale. Clay's background as a prize fighter means that he is not the most beautiful of men, but his extraordinary wife still found something deep and good in his voice and actions, enough at least to overcome any ex exterior roughness. Clay has struggled with drink, but never had any trouble staying sober while on duty. Shifting his addictive nature to focusing on work meant that he was a truly effective partner to the McKee, but one with a darker side. And we have Trinity Carrington, the Moth by Moonlight. 
Blind artist Trinity Carrington is one of the most gifted sculptors in the world. The Marquis saw one of her statues while visiting a church with another of with another of the guests in the mansion and tracked her down to create the carvings that decorate the sexy brutale. The elegance of her work is quite at odds with else with her wicked sense of humor and complete disregard for rules. She was caught cheating at cards using her extraordinary sense of touch and hearing, but this delicate situation introduced her to her future husband, head of security Clay Richard, uh, Rockridge. So she considers herself a winner regardless. <laughs> 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 okay. You do gotta wonder though, how do you cheat at cards when you can't even see the cards? Hmm. There are a few ways, but Yeah, you can you can fool cards, but I think the <laughs> the dealer would probably notice that. Yeah, and I think it will not use out cards, you know, cards that being used so much that they're getting worn out. Like yeah. He's falling up here and there. Yeah, to my knowledge, most casinos, or at least most uh, prominent ones, not that I've ever been to any, typically use new decks every day or so, or maybe for only a week or something. They don't. They don't use legacy cards, so just just call them like that. <clears throat> Anyways, Willow Blue, the Flame in the Dark. The Marquis knew that there was something special about Willow when he first met her in a curiosity shop deep in the swamps. His instincts were correct, though, he, though she never speaks of it. Willow Blue is the closest that the old families have to royalty. There is a drop of ancient magic in her veins, giving her strange dark gifts that allow her to see what others cannot. The Marquis struck a deal with Willow, engaging her, <coughs> engaging her services, uh, services. I, I think I need a drink already. <coughs> <clears throat> Let's try that again. The Marquis struck a deal with Willow, engaging her services to seek out unusual artifacts to display in the mansion, but she has deep concerns over one of the more exotic gifts the Marquis has found for his wife. Though that turned out to be just a fantasy in, <clears throat> in all of this. Tequila Bell, the Southern Siren. Even throughout her extremely modest up... Uh, the <clears throat> extremely modest upbringing, Tequila Bell had a truly extraordinary voice. The Marquis had long admired her as a performer and was staggered when he learned that she was the stepsister of Trinity Carrington. Since she was first invited, Tequila has attended and sung at every mass ball. Her usual accompan accompanist is pianist Reg Ned Rockridge, and she and the Marquis would also practice together, sometimes long into the evening. If you know what I mean. No, read, read that. <laughs> yeah, we'd also practice together sometimes long into the night there. <laughs> Wrong word, but... <laughs> <laughs> Although there was uh, never any outward impropriety, uh, these sessions were, usually, were eventually called to a halt by the Marquis shortly after he met his wife. So, yeah. She was, she was his first uh, love. And... Yeah, that's remember that very spiteful song that she'd sing and would lead to the uh, <clears throat> to the stained glass shattering and then killing her. Uh, what, what between her and him? Yeah, that was uh, that was supposedly written while she was uh, yeah very bitter about that. <clears throat> but eventually oh, she blew past it. Grayson Grayson. I still have no idea how to pronounce how to specifically pronounce each half, so I'm just going to say them the same. <laughs> the light Grayson finger locksmith. <laughs> Let's see. Grayson Grayson was bluntly an uncommonly good common thief, uh, thief in his youth. He was involved in several high, fairly high profile burglaries, but was eventually caught when his swagger outgrew sense, as Grayson puts it. After his stay in prison, voluntary, I could, <laughs> I could always have picked the lock, the Marquis contacted Grayson and requested that he provide security for the mansion. Grayson did so in spades, kickstarting his security business at the same time. The Marquis liked to, grease Grace, liked to tease Grayson about his past and would purchase items of great value to hide in the mansion, including, it seems, the treasure that Grayson was arrested for going after in the first place. 
Yeah, that, that is why he was obsessed with that big fucking Fabergé egg. Yeah, it's, it kind of has something to do with, like, make, I think that it, it's not in, uncommon, or not too uncommon, for ex-criminals to join uh, securities for they know the tricks. Yep. <laughs> and how to counteract them. Let's see. Red Rockridge, the gentle Goliath. Though his brother Clay was the prize fighter in the family, it was never in dis dispute that Red was simply in a different league when it came to sheer physical power. But Red never had any interest in conflict. His skillful musician's hands and imposing stature may, uh, uh, may uh, his skillful musician's hands and imposing stature, I think that's I think that may is not supposed to be there, helped make him an extraordinary uh, extraordinary and popular head croupé at the Sexy Brutale. At the party this year, he is accompanying Grace and Grayson on his search for one of the Marquis' treasures. Red might not approve of the plan, but he would follow Grace into the ends of this world and the next. Oh, I think he's supposed to say his stature may have make him, not made. Uh, yeah, maybe. I think he accidentally used the wrong word there. Then we have Aram Runes, <clears throat> Aram Runes the Midas Giant. Aram Runes is descended from a family of master goldsmiths. As a younger man, Aram worked tirelessly in the forges, smelting with methods of his own devising. He created hardened steels for the most challenging industrial designs, as well as inventing delicate filigree uh, techniques no one could match. Or filigree? I, I have no idea how to specifically mention uh, the, say that one. <clears throat> Fumes from a particularly demanding project aggravated a dormant medical condition, but Orum was able to create a specialized welding mask to monitor his heart rate. Orum is responsible for many of the most exquisite pieces of art and engineering throughout the mansion. And yeah, that oh. is why that is why his helm, his mask, has that heartbeat on that. He was wearing oh. his own welding mask <laughs> during all of this. Oh, so that's why. Okay, so that's why there are some masks we never pick up. Yeah. And last but not least, we have Thanos Gorecki, the Blueprint Prince. Master architect Thanos Gorecki is the... Uh, is... Yeah, no, <laughs> bit of, uh, another error here. Is one of the greatest minds behind some of the most ingenious features of the Sexy Brutale. He and many of the other guests of the mansion have worked together over the years to create hidden features or works of art throughout the building. His knowledge of the mansion is unparalleled, but even he is not privy to all the Marquis' secrets, and something has been troubling him about the behavior of the staff. Thanos, have, yeah, Thanos has attempted to leverage his knowledge of little-known pathways to get to the truth, but it has not worked out as he would hope. Okay. And then we get to descriptions of the individual rooms. The camera room. Keeping the mansion and the guests safe and secure is an enormous task, and which which the Marquis and his security team took very seriously indeed. The previous head of security, Clay Rockridge, would often confirm suspected cheating from this room here, but take no immediate action. It would only be later on in the ground... <clears throat> In the grounds of the mansion after dark, that the perpetrators would find themselves with their heads held on the water in the beautiful garden fountain, but only until they saw the error of their ways, of course. Oh dear. And I think another minor error, I think this is supposed to be on the grounds of the mansion. I think that's typically how it's is spoken about, like on the grounds of a mansion. Not in the grounds, unless, of course, you get buried there. <laughs> oh, dear. The Casino Center. The most famous game of cards ever held at the Sexy Brutale was between Alexander Minsky the Cruel, a Russian diamond magnate, and Big Mac Rockefeller, a Texan old baron. Cameras were installed to show the game, ostensibly for the other guests' enjoyment, but also to prevent cheating on the part of either of these, <laughs> these two notorious liars. In later years, cameras were installed throughout the rest of the casino, so that any game or room could be shown on this monitor. The original game ended, by the way, in neither a loss or win, but rather in a fistfight which saw both men depart from the casino for a year. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Oh, and I just realized something. 
Oh. I'd, com <laughs> I'd completely forgotten to turn on the display capture, so that wasn't showing anything up until now. Are you telling me you not recorded anything until now? Well, except our recorded. voices. You know, our voices and just the show, but <laughs> nothing on this part. I, okay, I'll, I'll edit that. Uh, I'll edit around that by just taking screenshots of the previous ones and putting those in instead. <laughs> okay, but that was just stupid of me. <laughs> okay. Let me at least make a note until when I was being an idiot. Uh, first, there's the pen. I keep losing this blaster thing. Uh, let's see, 15 minutes. Like, luckily, only 15 minutes, and not like <laughs> a full freaking hour. <clears throat> or worst case, almost two hours in into a video, and we, when we are about to almost end, is when we get to know. Oh, he has been muted for about. One hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's close off the ones that we've already covered. The Butterfly House. The Marquis held a, particularly fa uh, held a particular fascination with exotic, colorful, and above all, venomous creatures. He created this tropical room to house some of, the, some of his most beautiful and dangerous specimens. In addition to using their toxins to flavor and spice the drinks he served at the mansion, he practiced with thrilled and delighted as many guests as it horrified. He enjoyed nothing more than walking through this room, knowing that a careless step or misplaced touch could end his life. He kept the room safe under lock and key, but there were whispered rumors among the staff of a horrific, horrific creature growing unchecked in the sweltering darkness. Okay, we know at least that the last bit is fiction, but the rest... I think for the most part, these descriptions are actually relating to the actual Sexy Brutale, the one that was real in the past, and not this yeah. uh, twisted abomination that his own self-hate made. Yeah, I think that one might have been a rumor that survived in his mind and Probably. took a life on its own. Moving on to the bar. What's your poison bar? The Watch Your Poison Bar is one of the great draws of the Sexy Brutale. Every cocktail here is spiced with just a touch of exotic venom from one of the highly dangerous creatures kept within the mansion. It is these venoms that give the drinks served here a kick and flavor that most will never have experienced anywhere else. This practice is both highly dangerous and extremely illegal, which only adds to the appeal and palate of the drinks. It is said that the, most that the most delicious and dangerous venom is harvested from an enor enormous spider lurking deep in the mansion. <laughs> and we have the dance hall, which we kind of skipped through mostly. Uh, the, the Marquis considered himself an audio pioneer who loved to experience and experiment with a truly eclectic range of music. By mixing the old with the new, he threw parties that offered something truly different for his guests. Nothing brought him more joy than seeing new and exciting dances created in order to keep up with the fresh sounds playing in his home, in his dance hall. The Marquis liked to say that his balls were, <laughs> were greatly admired by high society, a comment for which he would usually be sharply rebuked by his wife. Uh, of course, <laughs> no matter how high society you may get, you're... <laughs> Your humor can stay as low as the ground, and even lower. Uh, okay. Tequila's room in the guest room. room. Yeah, we, we passed by uh, pretty quickly because it was haunted and we were chasing after Aurum. Okay. There's actually something else that I might want to show right uh, that happens right after that room. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. The guest room's Tequila's room. Tequila Bell and yeah, Willow Blue always had a room reserved for them when they visited the mansion. Despite the Marquis' best efforts, Tequila never wanted any particular luxury lavished on her. She only needed a place to sleep and access to the practice stage. But this year she has been a little disappointed by a, a, by a patch of rising damp in her room. And to top it off, she hears noises at night. 
It sounds like dark secrets whispered in her ear, making it hard for her to sleep or dream without images of terrible visions coming at her from cold and uh, cold, yeah, deep cold places. Yeah, it's on on the map. That's because uh, let's see, where about is it? That's the basement. That's the upper floors, as in the complete upper ends. Um, that ground floor, first floor. Yeah, that's because her room, where she is right now, since it's as early as can be, is right next to the uh, the ghost room. And wait, this. Okay, there's a ghost already hanging out in there. Okay, but that's where the the devil guppy is, or <laughs> the voodoo guppy, whatever it was. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. The hungry, the hungry Lock. When Willow Blue discovered the Marquis had successfully obtained an actual Juju Guppy, she was filled with dread. Far from being a, uh, far from being a colorful superstition, these ancient demons will sometimes take the form of a tiny fish in order to get close to people of influence, who have a lot to lose. Though she never speaks of it, Willow is a true voodoo princess, blessed or cursed with the second sight. Knowing the danger the guppy posed, the Willow created a powerful lock to, uh, <clears throat> to the secret room where the Marquis had hidden the fish so that no one could enter by accident. The lock will only open if the, uh, to the correctly prepared charm. Okay. Then we have the secret chamber right behind. The secret chamber is home to one of the Marquis's darkest, well, secrets. Knowing his wife loved and missed the sea, he obtained the rarest fish of all, a juju guppy, from the deepest swamps of the Caribbean. These tiny, brightly colored creatures were believed to house the soul of an ancient demon. Owning such a fish is entirely illegal, but for his wife, the Marquis was willing to break any rule. He created a beautiful, lush chamber in the heart of his mansion for his wife, to, you know, where his, for his wife to sit and watch the tiny guppy. <laughs> <clears throat> Eleanor confessed that spending time in the chamber with the guppy made her feel greatly uneasy. She said it would whisper to her, and she would be overcome with sadness. Okay, you'd think that they might have patched out these old uh, spelling and grammar errors. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only tiny blemishes. Let's see. The bell tower, the, the, the gigantic, gigantic bell mounted in the heart of the mansion was once used to mark significant events taking place throughout the day. It was made of a bronze and gold alloy which was crafted by Arum runes to produce a mellower sound than usual. Despite this, it can still be heard clearly in every part of the mansion when it is rung, no matter how far away the listener. Orm was unsettled by the bell, however, as he said the note it gave was far more haunting, haunting and sad than he expected, no matter how he shaped and reshaped it. Okay. Grinmaw, Deep Demon. All the stones, Grinmaw is the true form hiding behind the tiny juju guppy that the Marquis brought uh, for his wife as a gift, completely unaware that the legends were real. One of the true voodoo demons of the deep, Grinmar resembles a gigantic anglerfish with the tiny colorful guppy as the lure on the end of his tether. Only those with the second sight can see Grinmar's true form, but he delights in whispering madness to any who will listen. Willow knew that what was really in the tank in the secret chamber and created special candles that would reveal him for a confrontation, but once unmasked he proved to be more powerful than she could have imagined. Yeah, luckily, this one was entirely a fiction, though. <clears throat> Willow Blue's room. Oof, pardon? The Marquis met Willow when he, uh, when he traveled to the deep swamps of the south, looking for a truly special gift for his wife, a mythical juju guppy. He found Willow selling antiques in a tiny shop where every piece on display was more macabre and fantastical than the last as if she had a second sight with, that allowed her to see the stories behind the artifacts. Willow now searches out uh, unique and misunderstood curios for the Marquis to display in his mansion, and has, been, uh, <clears throat> and has been given her own room to stay when she returns each time from her travels. This year, Willow was horrified to learn the Marquis has finally tracked down that special gift and is keeping it in the mansion. And yeah, Eleanor's painting room. 
A talented artist, Eleanor loved to paint and sculpt. She was, as Lucas liked to say, fond of making a mess. <laughs> to create her studio here, Eleanor stripped and repainted every inch of the walls by hand, making it forever her own. The many paintings across the mansion are almost exclusively Eleanor's works. She loved to adapt existing styles and put a flippant or unsettling twist on them. The Marquis, ever fond of secrets, sealed off the room behind the studio and installed a hidden door behind one of the paintings to create a luxurious chamber for his wife. And last but not least, the Master Aquarium. Realizing that aquariums were an excellent way both to please his wife and show off to his guests, the Marquis wanted to collect only the rarest of fish. The Devil's Hole Pupfish is a tiny breed of fish existing solely in one muddy hole in one particular desert. Once every 100 years, a bizarre mutation will manifest and one will grow to an enormous size and display extraordinary, looking, extraordinary uh, coloring. These are known as the Devil's Monarchs. Lucas obtained a government license to own and preserve one of these, much to his wife's delight. However, this is still not uh, quite the rarest or most unusual creature capped in the mansion. I think that I think this part is real about the uh, Devil's Hole pupfish, but uh, this part not. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you're pointing at something. I I can't see your arrow. Yep. Weird. Uh, I can hold see on. About everywhere, but just the arrow is is invisible for me. Okay, let me change things up a little then, so that it should be more visible for you. Seems that today is just a... <laughs> today is just a mess up day with this. Okay. All that it doesn't show you on the game itself. So, let's go to the window projector. Live. Always on top. And how's that? Uh, oh, now I can see us both in stream and all. Uh, you were okay. only showing the game itself to me earlier. Yeah, a bit strange that it doesn't that it didn't show the arrow for you for some reason. But yeah, the Devil's Hole pupfish. I think that is an actual thing, but Devil's Monarchs obviously are not. <clears throat> and that's done. Uh, that's us done with the guest rooms. On to the music rooms, instrument pool room. The Marquis liked to say he blew so hard at playing most instruments, he almost literally sucked. However, he was an excellent pianist and a great audiophile. When Eleanor sang, the Marquis would frequently accompany her, and uh, playing together was one of their most cherished pastimes. The, <clears throat> the instrument pool is a shallow ornamental pond surrounded by stone replicas of instruments played by some of the couple's favorite artists, and in the cabinets are instruments owned by famous musicians from history. Every one of them is maintained and kept carefully tuned, or kept fully tuned. Any guest at the mansion who is happy to play for an audience is welcome to perform with any instrument they please. All right. And we have Tequila Stage. The stage within the music room ring of the mansion features one of several delicate stained glass murals commissioned by the Marquis, designed by the architect genius Thanos Gorecki, Gorecki and created by master goldsmith Aram Runes. The Marquis created this stage room primarily as a gift to the singer Tequila Bell, who is regarded as a living national treasure due to her extraordinary voice and talent. Whenever Tequila visits the mansion, she has the room entirely at her disposal. She is often accompanied by the uh, on the pian <clears throat> She's often accompanied on the piano by Red Rock Ridge, ex head croupier for the Sexy Brutale, and an unusually gifted pianist. Then we have the band room. The band room was another practice room for any of the guests or entertainers at the mansion to make free use of. It was actually mostly popular with several members of staff who had their own full house club bands that would frequently play during the masked balls each year. It was a little known secret that many members of the house staff were musicians who actually came to serve at the Sexy Brutale for the sole reason for gaining access to the treasure trove of instruments that the Marquis had accumulated. More valuable even than the instruments, however, is the opportunity to talk and learn from the extraordinary caliber of musicians who visit the mansion. And I think that is where the idea for the uh, <clears throat> for using the full house stuff with with, <clears throat> with the staff came from. Ah. Then we have the dressing room. 
The dressing room was created to allow Tequila and any other performers a private space where they could prepare for any shows, of which there were always many at the Sexy Brutale on any given evening. The area was originally another room for displaying instruments and other items from, from musical history, but these were all hastily stored and locked away in an adjacent storage room. A laundry chute allowed for changes of clothes to be quickly processed by staff, but in later years the room below was converted into an exotic butterfly house, and so the chute fell out of use entirely. It may, however, still be connected. Not that anyone would put anything down it, of course. Okay. Uh, the Theater Brutale. <clears throat> the Theater Brutale is one of the jewels in the crown of the Sexy Brutale. It has hosted countless plays and featured some of the most extravagant and involved sets ever created. The Marquis has always been a particular fan of escapology, and the current setup on the stage is for a particularly dramatic, but fairly simple, death-defying feat. Even though it is meticulously rehearsed, the spikes in electri the electricity involved are very real. In, this, in addition to his love for traditional plays and acts of escapism, the Marquis was also increasingly interested in immersive theater, and one day wanted to plan an interactive event that would include, uh, include the entire mansion. <laughs> Okay, so like a, a murder mystery. <laughs> oh dear. I think that might also have <clears throat> planted one of the seeds for his, uh, well, the entire game. <clears throat> the Moloch Egg was one of the Marquis' most guilty pleasures. The Egg itself was one of the three legendary treasures created for the Russian nobility by the Ruins family, the greatest goldsmiths in living memory, of which Orem is a distant descendant. The reason the Marquis acquired it, however, was mainly because he knew that his old friend and security expert, Grayson Grayson, was obsessed with the egg and driven almost to madness with a longing to see it. The Marquis, fully capable of being a complete bastard when it amused him, delighted in dropping none too subtle hints to Grayson that it was hidden somewhere in the mansion. <laughs> oh, Lucas. <laughs> uh oh. The switch rooms. The Marquis is a passionate supporter and enthusiast for, uh, <clears throat> for theater and the arts. Also, he is an enormous show up and loves nothing more than excessive displays of wealth and passion. For the most recent stage production, featuring an enormous gilded cage, he arranged for thousands of volts of electricity to be rerouted into the theater. As a token nod to some form of health and safety, to activate the electricity, two failsafe switches must be flicked at the same time. It's conceivable that the mechanisms could be tampered with, meaning that the same process would be needed to turn the electricity off. But the chances of that happening are surely too small to worry about. Um. Yeah. I don't remember if... I don't remember if you... Yeah, I don't remember how many of these you can get before getting uh, Thanos' mask, but many of these you do get from exploring the mansion again once you do have the mask and can, well, learn all its secrets. Hmm. The Marquis's Chamber. The Marquis had several offices that he used throughout the, um, throughout the mansion, but his favorite was this room located close to the Theatre Brutale. He was always looking for new and interesting shows to host, building many bespoke stages along with his architect, Thanos Gorecki, for one-off performances. In recent years, much of the original furniture from the room has been relocated, but there are still many important personal touches to the room, and secrets known only to the Marquis, or those very close to him. It is also believed that this room was where he kept some of his most famous and important personal artifacts and treasures. So of course, uh, Grayson would go looking there. <clears throat> the theater working, <laughs> working waiting room. The theater waiting room was created to allow visitors to the Theater Brutale an area to relax and prepare for the show. The ticket booth is purely for creating souvenirs. No guest of the mansion ever paid for an event, despite some of the most exotic and unique shows in the world going on stage here. In recent years, the Marquis was increasingly impressed with, Im with, Im yeah, with immersive theater and was even planning some shows that would potentially incorporate the entire mansion and take place over hours, or maybe an e or even an entire day. Another seed. Okay. The Heaven and Hell Staircase. The Hell Room. The Hell Room was one of two rooms that Eleanor planned to paint, a Heaven Room and a Hell Room, based on her love of some of the mansions that she visited when she was younger. 
However, while creating the demonic artwork that covered every inch of the room, she was overcome with a great sense of dread and unease. The hell room was later wallpapered over, leaving only one image as covered. She called it the Golden Skull, the skeleton of a young child with beautiful golden hair. The heaven room was never started, but lies two rooms to the west. Another seed. <clears throat> the dining hall. The dining hall has never been used to hold a formal meal as staff and guests alike find it deeply a deeply unsettling room to be in. A dumb waiter connects down to the kitchen as is usual in mansions of this size. As a somewhat macabre joke, the Marquis had the room laid out for a dumb supper, a meal for the dead, which was a reference that he was certain Willow would appreciate. She however found no humor in, the, in it whatsoever. And then the furnace elevator. At the center of the mansion is a glorious statue carved in the shape of a phoenix. It is one of the crowning glories of the mansion, a marvel of vision, art, and engineering. The statue was originally an enormous furnace that warmed the mansion before the entire heating system was redesigned and improved by Thanos. The Marquis also included a secret in the statue, however, shared only with a select, you know, very select few. It conceals an elevator leading down into sections of the basement, kept hidden from prying eyes. So secret, in fact, that the original safety codes to activate the elevator were changed so not even, so not even Thanos knows the true combination. <clears throat> I think we did know that one, since it's literally the room where we get the mask. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to the basement, where things go off the hook. The Great Gold Elevator. Reginald Sixpence... Uh, once was the closest to the Marquis of all the guests who visited the mansion. The Marquis recognized that within Sixpence was a true spark of genius, and he confided and colluded with him like no other. Sixpence knew about the basement, and created a mechanical elevator using sections of gilded steel that Orm had created to his specifications. For many engineers, knowing that their greatest work would be hidden in the depths of a basement would be an insult, but Sixpence truly lived for the pure joy of the challenge, a trait that perhaps would, could be misused, or would come to be misused. <clears throat> uh, who? Then we have the Broken Mask Room. A twisted, insane statue stands in the middle of the room. Its purpose is unclear, as if it was carved by, uh, crafted by a madman with only the most ten uh, tentative grasp on form, function, or meaning, and placed here out of sign and mind. Above it is a glass walkway, a series of tunnels that appear to connect rooms throughout the mansion in a secret, unknowable way. What is this place? Who walks, the, uh, who walks down here in the dark? And then we have the graveyard. A cold wind blows down here. The door opens into a wide outdoor field deep in the depths of the mansion. It is impossible. You recognize the names on the graves. You recognize the carvings on the stone. The gramophone room. The enormous gramophone stands in the dark. It is from here that the announcements from the mansion sound out. But who would create such a thing? Arwen would lack the mechanics, some of the inspiration, Sixpence the innovation, and Tequila the drive. The record spins when you run, creating sound and fury for as long as you exert yourself. But you go nowhere. You arrive back at the beginning, older but no wiser. This basically just sums up... Well... Everything about Lucas's self torture, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> the prison. The prison? Here, in the heart of the mansion? If you were to touch the walls, you would feel hundreds, thousands of tally marks, counting days, months, years. There's a, a tree growing from the cracks in the floor. How many would it take for the little sapling to become fully grown? How many years? Because, yeah, Lucas went Lucas went to jail for, well, starting to f the fire that burned down the, the actual Sexy Brutale. And, well, also indirectly causing who knows how many deaths, at least of his friends, maybe even more people. So he would have spent decades in prison. Yeah, and he was, he was meant to, for them to escape before it happened, but he went up yeah. too early. Yeah, it was all meant to go off once everyone was already outside. The card room. A gambler's paradise or a gambler's hell? The room is dizzying. One moment there is a, a sense of elation, followed by abject despair. 
Every moment swings from one extreme to the other like the turning of a card. The effect overwhelms the senses, absor <clears throat> absorbing every moment of consciousness. You feel an entire life could be lived feeling this way, swinging from a high to a low and back again and again and again. But would it really be any life at all? As you think these th thoughts, a deep chuckle, rich and welcoming, echoes through your skull. You recognize the voice without knowing it at all. Yeah, gambling addiction is quite the thing. And then we have the clean room. A laboratory, a hospital, a torture chamber. The room gleams with advanced technology and machines hum in the background. There's something on the slab. The outline of a person, perhaps? There's heavy breathing, as if the machines are forcing air into someone's lungs. Okay, then we're coming to the last few here. The gardens. The Marquis was an indifferent gardener, but Eleanor loved the mansion grounds and under her care they flourished. The fountain and its statues were carved from a single block of marble, imported at phenomenal expense and worked on day and night by Trinity for almost a full year. The full extent of the mansion grounds extends far beyond what can be seen from the terrace. Then we come to the chapel, where we started all of this. The smoking room. Who knows what schemes were hatched here in the smoky haze of the Marquis's most personal inner sanctum. What greatness was planned, what madness was plotted. Lucas and his uncle-in-law, Sixpence, would often sit, there, sit together here, long into the evening, discussing the future for their families. What ambitions did the two discuss? What dreams did they dare realize together? The places where, uh, <clears throat> the places where events occur, both tragedies and triumphs, are often recorded. But what of the humble spaces where the ideas first take root? Also notice this bit here, Lucas and his uncle-in-law, Sixpence. Yeah, Sixpence is Eleanor's uncle. I was pondering on, uh, to ask you that earlier for I heard about the phrasing of the first bit you read about uh, things that are wondering why it. Why does they keep seeing she in his uh, text? And now, yeah, I got to <laughs> confirm that they are related. Yep. <laughs> okay, also, the safe room. Uh, one thing uh, to ask. What chapel has a smoking room? <laughs> that is that kind of smoke room. Well, apparently this one does. <clears throat> the safe room. The Marquis had many secrets and many expenses. An enormous amount of effort went into making the running of the mansion appear effortless, but none of it came without cost. This room was where the unofficial versions of official docu uh, documents were kept. A beauty parlor for accounts where numbers were massaged and rules were relaxed. Grayson Grayson himself constructed the safe in this room. Utterly uncrackable to anyone without the code, it kept the truth at the heart of the affluent and seeming mansion hidden away from prying eyes. Yeah. This was hinted at pretty strongly at certain points in the game. But the real Sexy Brutale was not making any profit whatsoever. Well, it had started... I think it had made profits, but uh, it had started over the later years going downhill. Yeah. Which is why he decided... he tried to burn it all down so he could use the money from the insurance to, well, basically live with Eleanor free of everything, free of the burden of the Brutale. Okay. The waiting room. The nondescript of nondescript rooms. Please relax and take the weight off. There really is nothing of note to take note of here. Most people would likely have completely forgotten ever having seen this room, if they ever did even see it in the first place. Would you even recognize it from this angle? Perhaps you caught a peek, just a glimpse of a hint, once before long ago. It does it <clears throat> does it feel like a lifetime has passed since then? For some it certainly does. The room itself may not be important or noteworthy, but perhaps we should see if what's the other uh, if what's the other side on the other side jogs our memories. Okay. The hunting room. A hunter in his misguided youth, the Marquis came to abhor the concept as he matured. He kept his trophies as a reminder of the man he no longer wished to be, feeling guilt and sorrow whenever he, whenever he looked upon them. 
In this way, he was able to remind himself of who he had been, and in turn, who, we ne he, bleh, who he never wanted to become again. His wife discouraged him from visiting this room, not wanting him to cause himself unnecessary suffering, but exposing himself to the grief and pain was the only thing he believed gave so many unnecessary deaths at his hand any meaning. And yeah, that gets another meaning once you know the full truth, huh? Yeah. Okay, then we get to secrets, which is a bit of a lengthy one as well. <clears throat> the king in red, in the king in red's chamber, a room of true horror exists in the twisted dark hearth of the mansion. An ancient man, his body broken and ravaged by the atrocities he has endured, hangs suspended in a chamber that forces breath into and out of his lungs. Surrounding him are seven mirrors, showing him the murders of the guests throughout the mansion. Which every death the man weeps tears of blood. When the tank is full, a nightmarish engine drain, you know, rains the blood down over the mansion, starting the same hellish day all over again. He is the near mindless source of power that fuels the endless day of the sexy brutale. This is a throne room of the king in red. I was say, the name is obviously inspired by the king in yellow. Yep. But that's where the uh, comparison ends. Like, it's just the name is inspired by that character. The rest of the character is definitely unique. Mm. Yeah, you were thinking for yeah, a good right part here. that this was going to go into Cthulhu, huh? Look, it didn't. Mm. I will not, I can, actually, I would not have minded if it did, but... Yeah, I think that's probably the closest we get to the Cthulhu thing for. I always thought it was some kind of Cthulhu thing going on with that little weird statue early on that looked <laughs> organic. Yeah. Let's see. The Secret Haven. Hidden away in the mansion gardens is the tiny cottage where the Marquis and his wife would spend their time together when not planning or organizing the hectic and draining schedule of the mansion. It was a solace for both of them. And the more time the Marquis spent there, the more he longed to retreat from the demands of the mansion and its stress, to spend more time with his wife, preparing for a new life as a growing family. It was, it is, I cannot go on. And there it falls away, there the mask falls away for a moment by going into first person. <clears throat> oh, that one. We'll see about that one in a bit. The Sexy Brutale. Fire raging throughout the mansion. How did this come to be? Where is this? Can this can it be real? There must be a path through the flames, a way to fight past this hellish burning nightmare to a better place on the other side. That is what the storybooks teach us, surely. That past every great trial are the green fields of success and happiness. Then let us forge onward. Let us push through the pain and the blind hope that somehow, in some way, a better world awaits. <clears throat> The chapel. The Marquis was not a religious man, not in his youth at least, but his wife was, and the Marquis cherished her. He originally built the chapel as a gift for Eleanor, then over the years found himself spending more and more in his free moments in quiet contemplation here. Whenever he had a difficult decision to make, it was here that the Marquis would sit and think. He felt increasing guilt over the fact that he had also used the construction of the stained glass window as a particularly devious cover for one of his most closely guarded secrets. The planning room. The room is covered in sketches, diagrams, and notes, with a scale replica of the sexy brutale mansion on the table. The model shows every fireplace in the mansion, marked clearly with a flag. Pieces of clockwork mechanisms and volatile looking substances are scattered around. It appears that the Marquis and Reginald Sixpence were collaborating on a secret project together. To what end? To what purpose? And the clock tower. Welcome to my home, old friend, or should I say, our home. It feels good to finally be able to speak face to face. Well, the gold mask does somewhat get in the way, but we've always understood each other, haven't we? Sanos? No, I'm afraid it's me who has been leaving, and leaving you these little notes. It's always been me. I built this place, brick by brick. Sweat, tears and blood. I'm glad you are here, in a way, to see where it all began and where it all ended. It can be all yours. It can be all ours. After all, what else is left, old friend? 
Yep, it's Gold Skull who is responsible for all of these notes. Holy... Lofcadio Boone. In his youth, Lofcadio Boone was a gambler and casino owner, much like the Marquis. But in his older years, he renounced his indulgent lifestyle and turned to religion. How the two first met is unclear, but over the years they became firm friends, and Lofcadio has always been uh, has always been somewhat of a guide and mentor to Lucas. When trying to cope with the pain and loss of his family, the pain that ultimately created the mansion's never-ending loop, Lucas imagined himself as Lofcadio, drawing what little solace he could from his old friend's faith and strength. Ooh. And that so is why... So he's Lofcadio then. <laughs> yep. And that is why we, or we think we are Lovecadio Boon. <clears throat> okay. The Marquis. A wild and erratic gambler, Lucas's addiction brought him to the brink of ruin and madness before fortune smiled on him, making him rich beyond his wildest dreams. He created the Sexy Brutale Casino Mansion, but as costs mounted and his priorities changed, he sought a, a way to escape, resulting in the criminal deaths of those he held dearest and destroying everything he was or dreamed of. Over the decades that passed, Lucas has relived the consequences over and over, unsure whether death or life in torment was his correct punishment. Perhaps now, finally, the manifest love in his ma wife's memory has allowed this old man some peace in his final days. The Red oh, Doe. <laughs> yep, Lucas Bonds, the Marquis, Eleanor Bonds, the Red Dove. Eleanor met Lucas through, their, uh, through her uncle, Reginald Sixpence. Originally, she was enraptured by his fair and charm, but as the two fell in love, Lucas grew, uh, <clears throat> Lucas grew to rely on her grace and judgment in almost all challenges they faced together. When Eleanor became pregnant, evident, you know, everything changed for Lucas, and he began to look for ways to provide a secure future for the both of them. Her death and that of their unborn child unmade Lucas's life. Their memory is pure agony to him, but he also knows that she would not want him to suffer forever. The events of the Sexy Brutale were born from the impossible conflict between these two states of mind. The Bloody Girl. Mm -hmm. The Bloody Girl is the manifest memory of Lucas's wife, Eleanor. His wife brought purest joy to Lucas, but knowing that he caused her death is white hot, impossible grief and agony. The Bloody Girl has been trapped in the mansion all the years that Lucas has tormented himself. To look upon her is torture, with every detail of her suffering impossible to forget, etched across every part of her face and body. But within her, <clears throat> within her memory is the seed for forgiveness. Lucas knows deep down that she would still want him, one day, to be able to move on and live a life. So not everything of worth was lost on that one terrible night. And then we have... Let's see... Deuteronomy Boond? Okay. The Gold Skull. The man in the Gold Skull mask is the terrible aspect of Lucas that never wishes for him to forgive himself. In his mind, the mansion has been created to keep the tormented memories of everyone alive and fresh, uh, fresh and alive. In this way, Gold Skull believes that he honors them as best he can, by never allowing them to be forgotten, and never allowing him, Lucas, the Marquis, to forgive himself and move on with his life. Gold Skull has ruled the mansion and Lucas's mind for decades, and only in the most recent of times has the love of Eleanor, as the bloody girl, made the tiniest crack in the nightmare prison he has created. Gold Skull's will shapes the mansion, but the raw power to impose his vision is drawn from a deeper, darker will. The King in Red. Okay. And then we have one more here. The Room of Old Habits. You found me again, eh? You dared lock me away. I've missed you, old friend. I will rip you apart. The adventures we got uh, uh, up to together, you were mine. Don't you miss those days? Your rage and joy are worse nectar. Let's play around together. I will only need one. I know there's no such... Uh, there's, I know there's so much to think about. To catch up on. Give in. It's all so easy. Just deal the cards. Deal the cards. Spin the wheel. I will never let you leave. 
It'll be just like old times. Come closer. These chains really aren't necessary. Come closer. Uh. Let's see if I can remember how to exactly get over there. Uh, yep, there we go. Da, 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 da. Yep, remember that impossible door? That we that, that is just off to the side of the uh, casino's entrance. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay, we should be pretty close to that. Let me double check the map. Uh, yeah, just a few doors over. And there it is. Okay, I really should just take more time to listen to the other tracks, but this track is basically the poster child of the entire game, huh? Yeah, and brilliant. even now I am there dancing. <laughs> okay, over this way. Yeah, once you have all of the cards, all 52 of them, this door will open. Or I know, actually, I believe we will be able to get here earlier. But for this, you need all of the cards. There are enormous chains around the creature's wrist, securing him to the playing table. Ah, oh, Lucas, I've been so lonely. You brought me all my cards. You know, there was always another option. You didn't need to choose. You could have chosen not to choose. Gold Skull, Bloody Girl, Red King, Staff, Guests. Nah, forget them. Forget the pain and suffering. Come back to me. Forget them all. Just play, Boon. Lose yourself in the game. I will take care of you. I gave uh, you this mansion. I will help you. I loved you long before any of them, and you love me. Let me help you. Just take a card. sprightly, eh, Boone? Reckon you could match this? I doubt it, old friend. Hello, Cadio. What a party. I hardly know what to do with myself. Willow. You know, I can't even remember why I was so worried about a little fish. This is good. It feels good to be here. <laughs> These two. Boone, you sly old dog. Come join in. I can't believe the Marquis was keeping the Molokag from me the whole time. <laughs> Love Gaudio, it, it took me an age to learn this. Gray and I have been working hard. Thank you again for helping me to save him. Maybe one day I'll tell him. <laughs> Never mind. Caddy, old boy. Get down with your bad self. Don't tease. It feels good to cut loose, though. Did you ever head down that creepy elevator man? Seems like we were kind of confused and worried about Lucas. But look how well it is all turned out. <laughs> uh, uh, this place is heaven on earth, Laffy. Just let go and drink it in. Okay, I, I accidentally clicked through the first part what he said there. Lafcadio, isn't this perfect? What more could any of us want? Thank you so much. We don't have to think of what's next. It's just now. Just this moment, forever and ever. Forever and ever, uh, maybe. You, uh, which one do you speak? Do you speak with uh, Clay or her, his wife? Hmm? Yeah, she's talking. Actually, does she say something different when we try to talk to her? I don't know. I'm so happy to be here, Lafcadio. I get the feeling that it's somehow you're doing. Yes, you did me, sir. Okay. 
No, yeah. This may be nice and all, but it's all fake. It's just as fake as the entire adventure in the mansion. So... It almost come to an end. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you figured out what that thing was. His gambling addiction. Yep. Addiction. <laughs> okay. I like this game, but it's also rather painful. So like, I think many may be really uh, in this game in some levels. Don't be in people commonly have something this harsh with them, but may be familiar with uh, some what they experience with in some fragments. Yeah. I'd say that perhaps yeah uh, it's a bit unclear where how much of the pick your poison bar is true, but I presume I would make a bit of a comparison that this game would be similar to one of its drinks. Like, the, <clears throat> the poison, or rather the pain and such, it adds, it add, yeah, it just adds a certain thing to it that is difficult to uh, experience or appreciate otherwise. Uh. Okay. Now, there is one last little thing, not so much as good as an ending as that, that I want to show. But it is a little thing that uh, one of the staff that we've missed, actually. And one that uh, the fans actually quite like. And not just... Oh. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the, uh, the two stooges. <laughs> yeah, you, you could probably find quite the amount of... Yeah, entertainment just from following characters around to see how they interact with each other and such. Now, let me see. To get there... Uh, ta -ta -ta. Actually, they're right over there. Okay. Yeah, but there's been one hidden away here all this time. And the thing is with them is that they only have one interaction with anyone at all, if I remember correctly. Because, well, Orum comes here. And let's see, does, after that he leaves through here. Okay, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Uh, but until then, let's actually see. Okay, he'll be here before 4 p.m. So we will just have to wait for a while. Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah. Any other thoughts about this game? It is a masterpiece, even though they ha it has some, some like, typos. Yeah, it's it has some flaws. Though I will probably suggest people who are... How to say... Very Send. emotional. in the way they easily fall into depression. Some might handle this and might help them, but others should probably not play this, but it could probably make it worse. Yeah. A bit of a coin flip. Um, so I repeat, mm -hmm. a bit of a coin flip. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, in a way, I would compare that to... Uh... Trinity's statues, like, a lot of them have these tiny little imperfections on them that make them yet memor more memorable still, or memorable still. Like, <laughs> like the fact that there's a slanted painting in this room, and that's Orm in the next room. May that be that the summer type was maybe intentional? Maybe. It would be pretty funny. <laughs> That it would also explain why they aren't patched out. Mr. Rune, sir. 
It's a pleasure to have you in my bar. I'm such a fan of your blue beautiful work. Can I offer you a restorative, perhaps? <laughs> you know, according to my friend, I shouldn't as so much as shake your hand, let alone take a drink from you. I don't quite follow, sir. You know, Thanos? Mr. Gorecki? Of course, sir. The two of you are really are quite famous. <laughs> famous, eh? Well, I guess we work you know, pretty well together, even if so, even if he's a little cranky nowadays. You hear that? I wish I didn't have to you know, be like this. This is a good man. Say what, friends? Nothing, sir. Nothing at all. Point is, Thanos says you staff are out to get us. You believe that? I don't... I'm not sure you know, what you mean, sir. Truth be told, me neither. But Thanos, he's got his theory. He says there he has a secret way down in the basement. The basement? Yep, that I can believe. After all, he built this place. Or his family did, anyway. Sir, please, I... Don't you worry. I don't buy anything fishy going on here. But I did say I'd help him. And the one thing I can't shake is that I haven't seen Lucas around at once. Do you know anything about that? No, sir. The Master is often very busy. Yeah, but I've not seen Ellie either. It does seem a little... Anyway, I guess we'll have to pass another drink or Thanos won't let me hear the end of it. Take care now. Yeah, I think this one in particular represents, well, regrets. Yeah, he's moving. And yeah, and let me double check with the map as to where he goes. Straight through there, through there, and into that and through the mirror. That is how they all vanished every time they went into a dead end room. Not as much a secret passage as we were thinking, perhaps, but a secret passage all the way. And I think on that, instead of the show starting in an hour, it will actually end right now. So, yeah. Holy. <laughs> Again, good game. A bit heavy, though, it can be. So. Yeah. Yeah. Some folks I could probably recommend you easily, but others I would be hesitant to recommend it to you. Definitely. This 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 definitely is a masterwork, but it is a rather heavy one that isn't the best for everyone. So for now, as we listen to the music one last time, we will have to say goodbye. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you everyone who has watched this, and see you next time. Be well, everyone, and watch out for undead seagulls. <laughs> and do keep a check on your mental health. Yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs>